stepped out of Evernote and uh, became a VC. So you got yourself on the other side of the table yeah. this time, and I think this would this part of the conversation would benefit a lot of the entrepreneurs here. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what were some of the motivations of you being on the other side, uh, and why did you join uh, General Panelist and becoming a, a VC? Well, um, I wanted to. Um, uh, I, started, I realized that, that, that I wasn't the best CEO that Evernote could get um, at the stage of the company that we were at. So I'd always kind of thought, well, we want to be a 100-year startup, which means I, I have to find my successor, I have to find the next CEO. Uh, I didn't really think when. Like I, I would always think that, but I was never sure in my head, like, am I talking about 20 years? Am I talking about six months? Like, I, just, I didn't know. But uh, probably by year six or seven or eight, um, it got to the point where, like, I was actively aware that like, I just wasn't as good as, as, as the best CEO could have been in that situation. I thought that I was like, pretty good at, at the early stages, at like, solving the, the early challenges, the early puzzles, but the things that you have to do at a 500-person company are so radically different than at a 50-person than company and, or a 5-person company. And I'm like, I don't like the 500-person company uh, job. Like, it, it started to feel like a job. Um, and, uh, and I thought, well, we're fortunate enough that like, we can attract someone great. Like, the company deserves someone who does love uh, that job, who's really good at it. And you know, if we weren't successful, then maybe I'd have to stick around with it because like, we're not going to be able to find anyone better. But you know, I thought, hey, wherever we can find someone great. So I said, OK, I'm gonna, I want to step back. Uh, I wanted to become the chairman, focus on the product, do other stuff, but, but find a CEO. And that was a super tough process. I kind of knew that once I started it, it was very likely that I would lose control of it because you know, the new CEO is a new CEO. Um, but it was, it was definitely, it was emotionally very difficult, but it was in, in, intellectually, it was definitely the right thing to do. So we found a great CEO, Chris, uh, uh, excuse me, Chris O'Neill, um, who came on. My plan was to stay involved, but I kind of knew there's like a 50% chance that I would be able to stay involved and a 50% chance it would just be too weird. And within about a year, it, just, it was just obvious that it was too weird. Like me hanging around was just like, it was awkward for me, it was awkward for Chris. I was like, okay, the team needs to just feel full ownership of this. So I, so I stepped aside completely, um, which, uh, which is weird. Like every time I drive by the building, it's like, it feels weird. Uh, but, but it was good, the company is doing great. Um, and then I decided to be a, a VC. Uh, I, didn't actually, I didn't actually want to be a VC. I wanted to join General Catalyst. I really like the team of General Catalyst. And the thing that General Catalyst does is they, they hatch companies. So I didn't just want to invest, I wanted to like help make from a pretty early stage a few, like several things. And um, uh, I would, every time I would see a, a friend that I hadn't seen in a while, they would ask me like, hey, why did you go to the dark side? I would always <laughs> like, I would always give some answer and I would give a slightly different answer each time because I was auditioning the answers in my head. I was like, sooner or later, I'm going to hear myself saying something that's going to sound like the truth, and then I'm going to know that it's the truth. I mean, I was always saying the same thing, but it was always like a little bit differently. And then finally, after like a year, I met a guy that you know, I hadn't seen in about a year, and he's like, Phil, great to see you. How are you doing? He's like, so what? Why did you join the dark side? And, and, I gave the, and I heard myself give an answer where I was like, yeah, that's the one. That's the, that's the truth. I said, um, I want to, and I, I could only say this because he was also a fellow CEO and entrepreneur, so this is only an answer that I would, I would say to a person like that or to you guys. I said, um, well, um, I decided I want to organize my life so that I would never have to hear anyone else tell me that I had to focus. Like, I tell other motherfuckers to focus, <laughs> and I do whatever I want. And he's like, yeah, I totally get that, man. <laughs> um, because the experience of being in a company is, is focused. Like you have to. Like that's 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 what it, that's what your board is going to tell you all the time. It's like you're doing too much stuff. You got to focus down. And they're right. And you do. And uh, but I'm like, I wanted to do five things and not one thing. Um, uh, and so I thought that that being a general catalyst let me do that. And uh, uh, that was a great experience. But then I realized actually, well, it's kind of foolish. Like. General Catalyst is a top tier fund, and the, the job of a partner at a top tier fund is to write big checks. And so, like, as a side project, I was going to be able to do all this hatching stuff, but that was never going to be the main job. And I really wanted that to be the main job. So I kind of had like a little, you know, 20 minute crisis of conscience about it, and then decided, okay, let's let's actually make that the main job and do it. 
do it adjacent to a VC fund, not part of a VC fund. So we kind of started all turtles inside of General Catalyst, but then within a few months we decided, okay, it's got to be its own thing. So okay, we put it outside. What are some of the companies or products now with all turtles or back when you were within General Catalyst? <coughs> Wow, well, um, uh, I mean, I don't know that, like, I don't know that I'm proud of investing in something. That's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm proud in what a lot of founders have built, and like, I feel happy or, or like lucky to have had the chance to invest in them. And then I'm proud of some things that I think helped build. Um, uh, probably the company, like, one of the companies that I love the most, I was, I was an angel investor in them, and then, it was there, but they're also a big GC. Uh, uh, portfolio company is Gusto. Um, uh, we used to be called Zen Payroll and changed to Gusto a couple of years ago, and it's, it's great. Um, and I remember, when, uh, I remember when Josh first contacted me um, about an angel investment in Gusto, I kind of thought, well, okay, I looked at it and I said, this guy is gonna make payroll software. I'm like, the hell, like there's this young kid when he's making payroll software. So, uh, you know, I agreed to meet with him, and I thought that I was going to spend 20 minutes lecturing this, this guy about uh, how he should, like, only work on things that he really cares about, and, like, why is he bothering making payroll software? Like, how is that really interesting? And so I, like, walked into this meeting, kind of, like, you know, tell this, this, this young entrepreneur that he should, you know, he's a talented guy, he shouldn't waste his time working on boring stuff. And uh, I left, like, an hour later, I left, like, not only did he make me understand that, like, <clears throat> payroll software was like amazingly important and influential and it was gonna change the world because it was so broken right now and like fixing it is like just this tremendous thing to do for the world. Like he totally sold me on it. In fact, like an hour later, I had felt like I had wasted my life because I'd never worked on payroll software. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe I never tried to like solve this problem. Like he was so amazingly good at just like distilling exactly how the world was gonna be different because Gusto would be successful in it and like made me want to live in that world. And I was like, yeah, like all in, definitely. Um, and that's been like my key, that's like what I, what I expect from, from every pitch at this point. Like what I most want is I, I most want an entrepreneur to be able to articulate um, <clears throat> how is the world gonna be different if your company succeeds? Succeeds like better than you possibly thought it, it, it would. Like I don't really, I don't, you don't need to spend time explaining to me like you know, what plan B is or what the world looks like if you fail, like that's all easy. What does the world look like if you succeed more than you possibly think you can? And why do I want to live in that world versus the current one? And it, the, that answer can't be like, well, you'll have more money because you would have invested in me. Like, no, I mean like, how is the world fundamentally different in a noticeable way because, you, because your company has succeeded in it? And uh, almost no one can do that. Like it's extremely rare that I meet a founder that can articulate what the world looks like once their company is super successful and why that's obviously better mm -hmm. than, than the current world. 99% uh, can't do that. Um, so like, I think if you do that, like, you're already in the top 1%. Now, you need to be much better than the top 1% to get a, to get a VC investment, but it's a good start.